Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Zeke Lemon, and this is my review for Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 6. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean out of the way, shall I? I'm to leave a like. Comment below, let them know your thoughts on Rings of Power, and of course, hit that subscribe button as it helps me grow into my YouTube career. I would greatly appreciate it. And all that out of the way, let's get into the review, shall we? So, another episode is down, and we are only two episodes away from the finale of Rings of Power. And, you know, I'll continue to echo what I've been saying throughout this whole entire journey is that these episodes are much better, significantly better than anything that was happening in season one. In season one, a bunch of the episodes just felt really drawn out, very dragged out. I was just like, what's the point of this scene? What are we doing here? Okay, we get it. Let's move on. Or, okay, can you get to the point? While this season, and I felt like it was really apparent in this episode as well, I still think this episode was good. Um, don't get me wrong. I thought it was, you know, even great. I like how every storyline was shown up in some way, shape, or form uh, throughout this episode. Uh, now, I do believe some storylines were significantly undercut uh, and not much development, but, you know, at least they got a scene. Um, but the problem with this season for me is, is that I feel like a lot of the moments are just being rushed through and skimmed through. Now, one moment I'll talk about is like it's within the Harkwood storyline. Now, this is a very, very small uh, story beat, but it, it's just an example of something that I, you know, was watching when I, you know, I was analyzing as I was going throughout. And it's the kissing scene between um, Hoppy and um, the guy that she was uh, talking to. And, you know, they had this kiss and, you know, it sure be, they had the little meet cute a couple weeks ago where they first met and, you know, they've had some conversations here and there. But with how these characters are established that, you know, they are pretty much to themselves and, you know, they're like not, say, a little less confident within, uh, you know, their abilities within themselves. I would like to see a little bit more of a build to that kiss, you know? Like, I, I would have uh, liked to see a little bit more development with that. And it's just moments like that where I feel like, damn, we're just getting like straight to it, really moving it. Now, some of the moments I do like, like a couple weeks ago, where we did find out that girl was part of the other side. And, you know, our, our elf friend knew knew that and he and he figured that out and along with some other storylines as well I, overall i prefer them going fast than going slow but i do think you know in season three then probably find that nice blend because look he still hasn't the stranger still hasn't been trained right and you know he only had the one scene with bombadil going look you can either save your friends or you can save the world what do you want to do <laughs> and uh they have that nice little conversation now Obviously, he's going to be able to save both. He's going to be able to do the training and save them at the same time. Um, but, you know, he's only had that one scene. He still needs to be trained. We're going to have a battle next season. What is to come with the men's storyline now that the queen has proven that she is a queen? Um, and, you know, there's just a lot going on. And we only got two episodes left. And I'm just like, man, what are we to do? Like, it doesn't, you know, it's just, I just don't know how this is going to end. And there's a lot of things that we still have to go through throughout the whole entire show between all of the storylines. Well, I just feel like a lot of things are going to get cut w within the end and just going to feel very chopped up. Now, season three is already greenlit. So there is a very good chance that, you know, we are probably just going to end on a cliffhanger and see where these journeys go. And, you know, we'll be excited for that following season. And that would be fine. But I do feel like seasons, they do need a clear ending. And I just don't know what that ending is. I would assume the ending, because they've been really building to that the the rings of men will be made. And the rings of men will be passed on. And, you know, that will be the start of the corruption, if you will, uh, for Sauron. I really like everything that, that was going on within his storyline. Uh, really pinning everyone against, I guess, the king, if you will, of this elven uh, realm and getting his people against him who are helping him make the rings and now he's slowly taking over and he's so far in his mind that he's able to implement how he looks uh how everything looks fine but really everything's in peril and chaos and no one seems to notice that he even came out um really liked all that i loved everything with galadriel and the and the troll in their conversations and the way that they're engaging and how the trolls still at the end they're like nope we're going to go fight him there are some question marks like you know if you suspected bran to be sauron why'd you let him walk like that was that was kind of weird but you know overall i like their conversations i really like the conversation of look it's not that 
it's not the lies that he tells it's really his truth like he he did fulfill his promise he gave you an army he gave me children he gave me all these different things but he is still a very very dangerous man and i love i really like the conversation but what really carried this sh uh this episode in particularly overall was the Duran episode the trolls uh not the trolls the orgs is what uh, Gladriel is dealing with. The trolls is Durin. And I just love the story of father and sons and how it's a father that lost his way. Now, sure, you know, it's all it's all within the rings, but you see the metaphors, right? You know, it's a dad that, you know, was always a good king, but he's starting to lose his ways. He's starting to become more aggressive. He's a little bit older. And, you know, you just feel that, that relationship deteriorating. Like, man, you know, you're just not the same person, but, you know, I still love you. Like, I loved... The scene where you know he's talking with his wife and his wife's like look we got we gotta have to take him down and he's just like i'm sorry i can't that's just still my father um it was really really good captivating stuff love the whole chasing at the end especially when Darren like turns to his wife and goes i love you like it, it's just really endearing stuff that i am really digging into and i feel like the main three storylines which is the sauron storyline the Duran storyline is a real a uh, big one and then galadriel and sure, we didn't get um, uh, Elrod and, you know, the other elves within this. Gladriel is really the main character of the whole entire show. But I feel like those three storylines are really, really carrying the story. But at the same time, like, maybe we need to wrap up the men's storyline and just be done with it. Like, I know their, their rings are integral. And I do like the stuff when we do cut to them. I liked how our knight was just in there going, look, I renounced my crimes, but I do not acknowledge you as king. She is the queen. And... Then he's like, okay, well, you know, if you want to stand by your uh, loyals, we're gonna treat you. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna trial you by them, and you're gonna go to the sea monster. And the queen coming out, going, no, I'll go, since he fought for me. I deserve to be on trial for him, and then it proves her right. I liked all that stuff. I did. The daughter kind of gets on my nerves. <laughs> she, she, she does kind of get on my nerves. How like, oh, I can't lose another family. It's like, girl, you put him in this situation. I don't know. But out of you know, there's those three, and then there's the the men's storyline with our knight then there's the hardfoot storyline with the stranger i kind of like the stuff with the stranger the hardfoot stuff is kind of hit or miss for me yet um i do think you know they have given it much better focus uh as opposed to season one where it did feel like just extra stuff it's like i don't feel like we need it it's just like well you know they want to see hobbits so here's some hobbits um there is much more integral stuff to it but it still feels a little bit extra and then of course there's our other elf uh, storyline as well which I'm still waiting to see how it completely full uh, loops in within the overall storyline that one is the only one that seems very extra like all the performers are involved within that storyline and when we do cut to it it is somewhat interesting but I think out of all six storylines that are happening I think that's the one I got most least attached to like it's probably that storyline then you know the hardfoots I do like the stuff with the stranger, but I think it's the hardwoods. Then it's the men, and then there's the big three are like right with each other uh, because they they are also captivating. So overall, I really like this episode. I had a fun with it. Again, I'm really looking forward to next week when we do get this battle. Um, just by who I am, it might be my favorite episode because I do love me some action. But I am nervous on how we're going to end this thing, and, and I, it's either going to be really rushed or I'm not going to be fulfilled, and I'm not really sure which one I prefer more. But let me know what y'all think about it down in the comment section. Leave a like if you made it this far. I do greatly appreciate it, and hit that subscribe button as I am trying to go into my YouTube career. We have a lot of content coming out, and of course, I'll see you here next time at Lemon Studios.